I'm Gary Adcock. I'm your host for the day. We're going to have some fun this afternoon talking about lenses and, and camera accessories and all the things that are related to PERG on this day. So. And just so everybody knows, yes, these are being recorded. They'll be posted on the, on the ESTA website, uh, YouTube channel. Uh, the sessions from this week will post next week. And the panel discussion that we're going to have next Thursday, um, which I think everybody should come to, is going to be pretty interesting. Because uh, we're not talking about products. We're talking about what we think the future is. And with me will be Brandon Cooper from First Mile Technologies, uh, Michael Cioni from Frame.io, from LightIron, and then Frame.io, and now Adobe. And uh, Stephen Ukas Bradley from Airy, and we're just going to discuss where we think the future is going. Um, it's been a kind of a crazy couple of years, and with everything that's gone on in the industry, all of us have a different viewpoint on how we think our part of the technology is going to move forward. And we decided just to, rather than end with something other than that, we thought we'd just talk about the future with everybody. And that's on November 18th, the uh, same time, same place as we are right now, um, and we hope everybody will join us. Uh, just so everybody knows, there's a chat box. Uh, put all your questions and everything in the chat. We're trying to keep track of it. We actually did not put up a quick Q&A pod this time because we figured it was easier for everybody to work in the chat. the chat. The chat is actually recorded. So make sure you understand that when you put something into a private note for everybody, it actually gets recorded and added to the event. Um, but yep, uh, we're here and I will take your questions all along during this. Anything you have for any of us, please let us know. We're more than happy to answer your questions. All right, with that, I think we should probably get rolling. Welcome to the third session that we're going to do on the PERG Year in Technology Roundup. Uh, I'm Gary Adcock. I'm, I'm uh, the head of Filmscape Chicago, and for those of you that don't know, Filmscape is a, a, an educational not-for-profit that I joined this year to help better education in the film and television community. Um, it, Riddle houses are a, a, a something I have believe in and have for a very long time. And, and, and I want to like start off right with all of this. But before I get going, let me introduce PERG Council President, uh, Chairperson, excuse me, Anna Mayo. Anna, why don't you come in and say a few words? Okay, great. Thanks, Gary. So on behalf of the Production Equipment Rental Group, I'm thrilled to e welcome everyone to our third session of PERG's Technology Roundup. Today, we're spotlighting lenses and lens accessories. I want to take this opportunity to thank PERG's annual sponsors, including Aerie, Camera One, Dynamic, Intellivent, Panavision, and Taylor and & Taylor and & Associates. Today's event is also uh, sponsored by the participating vendors. Thank you guys for being here today. Those vendors include Aerie, Atlas Lens Company, Band Pro representing Ingenieux, Crozeal, Cook Optics, Duclos Lenses, Fujifilm, Lights, Musashi Optical, and Zeiss. Once again, we're thrilled that these people could join us today and look forward to their time with us. I also want to thank Filmscape Chicago and Gary Adcock for hosting the sessions and running the platform for this event and the previous ones and the future one. As most of you know, PERG is a trade group. It's part of ESTA that is for and by rental companies. Um, only a small percentage of the rental companies attending this event today may may be members. So we would like to encourage you to consider joining PERG. PERG shines a light on the challenges and the opportunities faced by professional rental companies. If you would like to learn more, Harry will put a link in the chat for you to check out if he hasn't already done so. And with that, I'll say again, welcome and enjoy today. Thank you. Thanks, Anna. 
So, and, and, and before we get going, I'm going to actually uh, share some information here, just so everybody knows kind of how we do this. Let me take over the screen. I want to find this one. There we go. Um, our technology roundup, we're going to have some information. At the end of all of this, we're going to have breakout sessions. So just so everybody knows, the breakout sessions are at the bottom of your bar, at the bottom of the Zoom bar, and they'll pop up in a little area, area like that. No, you can't see them yet because we haven't enabled them for you. And when you do, you'll be able to select based on which manufacturer you want. The name of each individual will be under their manufacturing setting. If you go to the right side of that little panel, there's a little, there'll be a little indication of how many people are in that room. Ho hover over that and you'll get an indication that says join. Click on that, it'll take you right to that room. When you exit, pull up, you'll just say leave, and it'll come up and say, do you want to leave the breakout room or do you want to leave the event? Please leave the breakout room and come back to us in the main area because we're going to have some information for you after the breakout rooms. And then we'll have an open discussion, and if that's where it goes, that's it. But now let's start back. Let me get back on my screen, stop my share, and get back to it. And uh, I think Art Adams is our first person up today. Ari, Lindsay. Oh, boy. Oh, uh, yeah. You, you get to be the first one, Art. <laughs> All right. Well, I guess I better set a good example. The Maybe stage is yours, my friend. All right. And uh, can everyone see that? Yes. Should be a PowerPoint. Okay. Sounds good. So uh, this is going to be a very quick summary of where we are right now. What we're talking about right now is our signature lenses or signature, uh, sorry, signature zooms. Hopefully you're familiar with the signature primes. They've been out for a while. We literally cannot build them fast enough. And now we're in a similar situation with the zoom. So I'm going to go through those quickly. Um, there we go. So this is what we make. And this is what we're going to talk about. We got 16 focal lengths and signature primes. Um, all of them are shipping and uh, basically they all match. Largest set of Super 35 and large format prime lenses. They're not just large format, they're Super 35 as well. So the way they came about, we kind of looked at our philosophy and previously we'd worked on making lenses that projected the finest possible image uh, onto film negative. Turns out that doesn't work so well in the world of digital sensors because you know, sensors don't have grain and gate weave and all that other analog stuff that takes the edge off. So what we decided to do is go back to the drawing board and figure out how do we make a new character for what we're going to be, how we're going to be looking at images in 10, 15 years. And that's going to be HDR, high resolution. And we're a company that makes high performance products, so we're not going to make something that looks soft or flurry or bad. But you know, at the same time, a lot of the aberrations that you see in lenses these days uh, that are so popular don't look so good in HDR. So we couldn't really go there. We had to kind of redefine ourselves. So we created a look. And the look, uh, if you want more details on exactly what the look is, the way I would describe it, we can talk about it in the breakout sessions because it's a little bit, I want to go into more detail. Uh, suffice it to say that these zooms intercut with the primes perfectly. They are definitely a matched set. So we have four zooms plus one extender. The extender works on the 65 to 300 and turns it from a 16 to 300 to a 110 to 510. Uh, we have a 16 to 32, a 24 to 75, a 45 to 135, and the 65 to 300 all are T28. If you put the extender on the 65 to 300, it becomes a T49. So 16 to 32, uh, as you can see, the floor quality is really beautiful. It's consistent with the signature primes. We add a little bit of a glow uh, because we discovered in HDR, really bright highlights with hard edges tend to strobe, and it's not, it's not HDR. It's your eye. When you see really bright objects on an HDR screen and they're moving around, they look like they strobe. But if you take a little bit of the edge off, they don't. Plus, it just looks really nice. This lens is beautiful because it has a little of distortion, but not much. More distortion than a similar signature prime, uh, but that's because there's an interaction between chromatic aberration and distortion. In the primes, we can solve for both. In a zoom, you have to choose one or the other. So it's still very good with distortion, but we allowed a little bit more more because chromatic aberration is going to look terrible in HDR, and we really worked hard to eliminate it. And uh, we also designed it for landscapes. The 16 to 32 has a little bit more of an edge to it. It's a little bit higher, higher resolution than the others, but that's specifically because we imagine it being used in 
scenarios like this where you want to see a lot of detail in a wide angle of view. 24 to 75 is just, it's beautiful like the rest. As you can see, the bokeh matches the signature primes. Uh, the zooms are slightly lower resolution than the primes, but not by much. But otherwise, uh, color, um, contrast, contrast is a little bit lower. Zooms are a little bit warmer than the primes, but the bokeh, how they handle skin, how they handle detail, how they roll out of focus, all the rest of that is exactly the same. This is from a, a really interesting commercial that I can't show in its entirety right now. It's gonna be released next week, but it's a little tons of commercials that was shot entirely on our wider zooms. And of course, uh, the same skin tone handle that you'll see in the prime. So very natural. There's nothing artificial about it. So it's not artificially soft. It's not artificially soft it, or, or sharp. It just looks real. It's really an interesting look in HDR and in HD. Uh, of course, we got the 45 to 135. Uh, it's a really solid workhorse lens. We're seeing a lot of adoption in uh, food with this lens, actually. And there's a trick I'm going to show you at the end that uh, works particularly well with this focal length. And last but not least, the 65 to 300. We uh, shot this recently while we were at the Jackson Wild Film Festival. We did a little detour through Yellowstone. On the top, you can see the range without the extender. On the bottom, you can see the range with the extender. So significant difference. The extender does take a little bit of the, uh, you know, it takes the resolution down a little bit, but it's not much. Um, it's a really, really high quality extender. It will only work on this zoom though, because we, it's custom made for this range. You can't just make an across the board extender and expect it, the quality to be as high as we expect it to be. So it only works with this zoom. It'll also work with the 200, uh, 280 millimeter signature prime. And actually it turns that into a really high quality 476 uh, prime. So here we are on the, ex the uh, end of the extender at 510 and full wide. It's a really, really nice combination. And while we were there, we shot a fair amount of wildlife. I basically put the extender on this zoom and never took it off. And the quality turned out to be absolutely phenomenal. All right, some quick tips and tricks. Uh, all the same uh, stuff that you can do on the back of our signature primes, you can also do to the back of the zooms because they all have the same magnetic rear filter holder. Uh, there's, there's a DP who was uh, ramping up to shoot a series who showed me his collection of custom filters that he made by hand out of uh, vellum. Uh, a lot of it imported from Japan, which he either hand painted or hand trimmed. And uh, he's doing some really interesting uh, effects on this show. I, on the other hand, bought the Body Cricket uh, cutter, uh, which I can use to custom cut filters myself because I figured I could scale them up and down for custom focal or for different focal lengths. And then there's this little trick. So I'm Matt, I'm trying to throw some business your way. This is a, a really nice little solution for macro, the 45 to 135. Uh, with two of these 15 millimeter extension tubes stacked, you can focus right down to the front element. And we're actually uh, testing it with a food uh, photographer right now. And the results are looking really, really good. So 45 to 135 is shipping now, 65 to 300 is uh, starting actually this week. We had a production delay due to supply line issues, but that is now, that lens is now moving. And the 16 to 32 is on track for January and the 24 to 75 is on track for February. And that is it for me. How close was I? Uh, a little bit over. Oh. All right. Everybody seems to hit about, and, and you guys all hit, seem to hit the six minute mark for some reason. It's about what it is. Um, next up, uh, we're going to have Randy Wedick, who's from Ingenue and Band Pro. Are you there, Randy? Hey, what's happening? I'm going to uh, share my screen here one sec. I'll wait here till you do, because that's what it's all about. So yeah, I'm I'm coming from BandPro, but um, recently we have also um, kind of absorbed Ingenue Americas. So um, I'm so we're doing all the Ingenue lenses, but we're also a shop that sells basically you know any kind of cinematography lens out there. We we have so um, 
like I've said to the guys here before, we're happy to, you know, sell you any of these items here, but um, this is a business partnership we have with Ingenue and we've been developing lenses with them recently. And I just want to talk about two different products today. Um, first is we've got some new zooms that are these ultra compact zooms from Ingenue. And it's kind of a refresh and a re-up of their uh, very popular Optimo zooms, which are um, 28 to 76 and a 15 to 40. So these have been um, sized up to a 37 to 102 and a 21 to 56. And that's very similar um, in terms of field of view to those previous lenses. Um, but these are um, gorgeous lenses that are um, have a very modern design to them. They have uh, much better mechanical uh, construction on the inside, even than the previous workhorse lenses. And they're just really designed along this strategy that Ingenue has been pursuing for a long time, which is high resolution, yet low contrast. So the low contrast um, allows a lot more information to be delivered into the um, digital sensor without kind of, you know, overloading it and clipping it. And, and it also um, is very kind on skin tones and skin texture. Um, here's some informational stuff about them. They're both 2.7 zoom ratio. They're both gonna be T29. Both have a close focus of two feet. Um, and they're basically exactly the same dimensions and volume. Um, and they have metadata and, um, they're just going to be really useful lenses. And when you want to have, you know, when your main thing that these lenses are designed to do is, you know, photograph people and deliver high resolution imagery of, you know, scenic environments, but they're really nice, um, appealing cinematic look of Ingenue. You know, it's like a, it's a very well-known look that has been around for generations. And um, these are, um, going to be shipping, uh, I would say the uh, 37 to 102 is gonna be shipping around the first like two, three months of next year. And then the uh, 21 to 56 will be um, shipping near the end of the year. So um, we're super psyched on these lenses. Um, I think they're gonna be kind of a, you know, a very big hit for us. So we've, um, had a great experience working with the easy lenses over a lot of time. And um, these lenses are going to be a big step up in terms of uh, performance, um, geometry and uh, resolution. And uh, the big thing also is the mechanical um, ruggedness of it. It's going to be, you know, ab able to be a, a workhorse lens for years for um, rental house customers and owner operators. Um, and then also uh, we're selling a lot of these. We keep selling like so many of these lately. Um, the Ultra 12 by Zoom is a, a Zoom that can be configured in Super 35, U35, which I don't have listed on here, which is like Super 35 open gate and full frame. And um, it's based, it's a, it's a design that's similar to the old 24 to 290 um, that, but it's again, the mechanical quality and the, uh, Optical performance has been very, very much revamped and it's just a gorgeous lens. Um, and these, we sell just tons of these right now. It's, it's kind of crazy. Um, but I wanna also talk about, uh, a lot of people have, have heard about the Optimo Primes over the last couple of years, but we're really starting to push forward now, finally on this integrated optical palette system. So what this is, is basically um, inside the lens, there are three different customization zones and then you can see these red, green and uh, yellow dots. So you've got the red dot is the um, center optical palette filter. The green is the iris mechanism and the yellow would be the rear filter. And basically um, you can kind of take this lens that's this gorgeous, modern, beautiful, high res, low contrast, warm cinematic prime lens. And then you can start tweaking it based on what you want for your show. Do you want more halation? Do you want different kinds of flares? Do you want reflections inside the lens happening at certain times? Um, would you like a, you know, a different kinds of irises, uh, triangle irises, oval irises, that kind of thing. And then also rear filtration um, as well. So, and then, and then combinations between all these things. So um, basically this allows uh, a lot of just, uh, 
rental houses that don't have entire optical design departments inside them to compete against the very large rental companies that do have those. So, um, you know, if you want to put in a center palette here, one of the things we've been messing around with is putting glimmer glass inside there. And you can kind of, um, let's see here. I think my screen is locking up here. You guys still um, hearing me? My yeah, I see the lens break out with the center palette indicated. In yeah, I just am not able to switch pages anymore. There, there we go. Goes. Okay, so um, here, you know, I've got like a glimmer glass on the inside, which is a reflective filter. And you can see the light would come in and it would start just bouncing around inside the lens. And this isn't like something that's on the front of the imager. I mean, the front of the, the lens or the back of the lens, it's inside. So it's doing some really unique, cool stuff. Um, and, you know, like I said, these, these bi-directional optical reflections, they create these really cool effects. So I highly recommend you guys check out these new uh, series of videos that we're shooting. I have a set built upstairs at BAMPRO that we're shooting on this week and next. And um, it's, it's going to result in some pretty awesome stuff. Um, also, if you have a diffusive element in the center, what's really neat is that you eliminate entirely um, like printing of bokeh patterns in your out of focus areas. A lot of times you'll see when you're rolling through focus and you have like uh, classic soft or something on the front, you'll see the pattern etched pattern in your highlights, you know, in your out of focus highlights. And because of this position, um, it eliminates that, which is another really cool thing that happens. You get some, you know, pretty trippy effects like this, but there's a lot, um, We've got a couple of big shows that have gone out with it already. And then um, there's some very large feature films that are scaling up with um, some customization options uh, pre-installed in them, which is really neat. Uh, Blue Streak Filter is another thing that we've been uh, popping in there as well. The Iris cartridge, um, I have, uh, we've, we've just received all of these triangular Iris cartridges, which are really cool. And then they're also developing a, uh, oval iris, so you can kind of mimic some of the look of uh, an anamorphic lens. And then in the rear, um, what's cool about the rear is that like the light rays have spread apart. So there's some geometry, there's up, down, left, and right on the image now. So if you want to have, say, for example, um, sharp focus in the center and fall off as you get towards the edges, um, field curvature, that's a good position for that. Um, so if you want a geometry based effect, it's cool to put it in the back. If you want an overall invisible effect, it's great to have it in the middle. Um, because that's kind of, you know, where it's out of focus in the center there. Um, yeah. So basically, you know, if you want like something geometry based, like that allows for like vignetting field curvature or sharpness related, it's usually, you're going to want to have it in the back. If you want, like I said, overall, cosmetic diffusion that's invisible, it's best to have it in the middle. Um, and we have all 12 lenses are shipping um, and they're available in three different kinds of sets. These are the different focal lengths and these are the prices. And um, please feel free to contact us at bandpro.com if you have any questions about any of this or talk to me in the breakout room afterwards. Bye-bye. Thanks. Thanks, sir. Appreciate it. You know, it's it's tough for everybody. Remember, everybody, we want you to fill out the poll, too. And if you don't fill out the poll, we don't get that information. Um, I think uh, Dan from Atlas is up next. I don't know which one of you are on there. You're marked as Atlas, so I don't know which one of you was which. So, Hi, how's it going out there? It's Dan. Good can you hear me okay? I can hear you. <laughs> okay, wonderful. Just look There you go. Hey, That's everybody. It. I'm Dan from Atlas. Let's go. Happy Mustache November. Hope everyone at Purge is doing great. That's just a little joke for you. Um, I'm here with many of our colleagues here at Atlas. Uh, I've got Oksana operating the camera. We've got Nick running the streaming setup. So you can see we've got a 32 millimeter Orion series uh, streaming from an Alexa Mini LF here. We've got Kathy who runs our marketing department, Kim from marketing and also my colleague, Matt Sala, who's one of our amazing lens technicians, who also runs our demo program here. Um, so just a little bit about Atlas Lens Co. 
We are a relatively new company. We began in 2016 developing a series of anamorphic lenses that are made to make cinematographers more, work more interesting, more personal, and more rewarding. And that resulted in the Orion series set of primes. We have six focal lengths uh, in the original family. We have the 32, the 40, the 50, the 65, the 80, and the 100 mil. And we just introduced the seventh lens, the 25 millimeter uh, Orion series, and that should be shipping next year. Uh, and so we have pre-orders open for that now. All the other focal lengths are currently available in limited quantities. And they're two times anamorphic squeeze lenses uh, built in a traditional anamorphic style. So they're made to cover a four curve film format, but they're equally at home on digital camera systems, uh, whether you're using RED, Ari, Sony, Canon. Um, these are really universal workhorse anamorphic lenses for cinematographers to make their work more interesting, more personal, and more rewarding. And all of those lenses in the Orion series family are T2. Uh, by default, they ship with a PL mount, but we also offer an interchangeable EF mount, uh, as well as sets of shims that you can use to collimate the back focus, which is essential to getting the best optical quality from the Orion series family. And the other thing I would add is that we also have some really incredible accessories. So I mentioned that the lenses are designed to cover a four per film gate. And recently they were used by Lena Sandgren uh, ASC FSF to shoot two films uh, that are going to be debuting fairly soon. One is Babylon, which should come out next year. And the other one, which should come out a little bit later this winter, is called Don't Look Up, uh, done with director Adam McKay. And Babylon was done with Damien Chazelle. So uh, be on the lookout, whether you're streaming from home or going to the theater to watch these films. We're really thrilled to see these debut and, you know, see his team and their excellent work up on the big screen um, on A-list movies. Um, so coming back to those accessories for the Orion series, you know, ranging from 25 through 100 mil, we also offer uh, an expander extender accessory that we call the Atlas LF extender. And what this will allow you to do is two different things. So if you're using a four perf or super 35 format sensor or, um, camera, not with film with this. Um, if you're using a four perf digital format, you can expand the image to cover full frame. So these will take any of those seven lenses and allow any of them to cover edge to edge on a full frame or LF format sensor. And if you're using a super 35 sensor, uh, you could use it with the 80 millimeter to turn your lens into an effective 127 millimeter focal length or with a 100 mil, it becomes a 160 millimeter focal length. So you get a little more range on the long end with those. And um, this is optimized for our lenses, but it will work with certain other lenses um, pretty decently with zooms. And if you're having poor performance for some reason, just check your back focus with the extender. Uh, and we're always big proponents of helping test and establish testing methodologies for rental houses or owner operators. Um, we are administrators of the DENS, FDC, and PLC calibration systems. So the FDC will let you set your back focus for your camera body or check to make sure that it's right. And the PLC is a lightweight portable projector that will allow you to get a quick read on how well your lenses are performing in the field or in the shop. Um, and so coming back to those accessories for a second, we also have a series of lightweight support brackets. So we have uh, this 114 millimeter clamp, which will go around the main body of the Orion lenses. And then that's attached currently to a 15 millimeter lightweight bracket. So offer a 15 millimeter studio bracket for West Coasters like myself. But if you're using 19 mil rods, we also have a 19 millimeter support bracket, which will work great with that lens support clamp. Um, and also if you don't mind panning over. So we mentioned the six and seventh Orion series lenses. Um, Something that we introduced uh, earlier this year were the Orion Series Silver Edition lenses. So this is a limited production run of 106 lens sets, which use specially designed optical coatings, uh, precision augmented air spaces and precision augmented surface thicknesses for the different glasses in the lens that make them have a different through focus characteristic, as well as very special flares. 
uh, that are part of our coding design. And these are limited edition. Uh, there's only gonna be a hundred of these sets ever made. And a large number of these have already sold. So we're very grateful to everyone who's jumped on the silver edition uh, team. And of course, we're also very grateful to everyone who's purchased Orion series or is considering looking at the Orion series. Uh, we offer both in-person demos here in Burbank, as well as online virtual demos that you can schedule with us to get a bespoke customized demonstration experience and then get footage from the test afterwards if you're unable to visit us, uh, whether you're here in the United States or overseas. And um, the other thing I'd like to show is if we can switch over to this camera. So right now I have a 32 millimeter silver edition lens set up and we've got this on the Alexa Mini LF camera. So I'm just gonna show off some off axis flares here for a second. So this is a little off axis flare with our Orion series silver edition. And there you have it. I like these little bubble flares from the off axis guys. Some of my favorites. Um, so again, if there's any questions anyone has about Atlas Lens Co or the Orion series family or the accessories that we offer, feel free to join us in the breakout session afterwards, but we're always available uh, by phone or by email to info at atlaslensco.com or at our website, www.atlaslensco.com. And isn't seeing people here. I'm grateful to everyone out there at the bridge. Also happy Veterans Day. See you soon. Thank you, sir. Much appreciated. Yeah. And, and you know, that's how it goes. I was actually having to manually pin that up there. So I was having a little, had to do a little things in the background for everybody. Um, uh, next up, we have Tim Steinman from Krasil. Tim's going to talk about the, the Promista add-on motor and then some stuff they're doing for the FX6 and FX9 cameras from Sony. Are you there, Tim? That's right. Thank you very much, Gary. Oh, thank you, sir. Good to see you again, too. <laughs> yeah, thank you. So everybody who does not know me, I'm Tim, Tim from Crozeal. I'm the CEO of the company, and I would like to give you a run through of what we have done lately within this year or the end of the year. So I hope you all see the presentation. So um, I would like to start with the Zoomer, which is a universal servo drive for all the zooms out there. So it's, I'm pretty sure it will work perfectly with the new engineer zooms and um, with the size zooms you will hear about later on as well. And to, to give you an idea about it, um, the zoom motor is a motor for cine or photo zoom lenses. And it's dedicated for those run and gun documentary live and EMG applications. So it's not mainly cine, so it's more for those guys using the FX6 or FX9 as an example, because they are controlled by the zoom rocker of the Sony FX6 and FX9. They are additionally controlled by LANC, um, so any kind of LANC zoom rocker will work perfectly with that motor. It inherits five zoom modes, depending on what you want to do. If you have a silent application, it limits the top speed, for example, of the motor. Or if you want those really slow um, zoom ins and outs, um, for example, if you're in an interview um, session or wildlife um, documentary, um, that's perfect um, for the documentary mode, as an example. What we have done or what we are still developing is right now a full servo drive unit um, dedicated for the Fujinon Promista lenses. Little shout out to um, Stosh later on. These servo drives will fit all three Promista zoom lenses and they are dedicated for cinematic multi cam remote and ENG applications. So they are strong zoom or strong cine motors but they are strong enough to make your camera or your broadcast setup in a way that you have the zoom and focus demands in the back and you have iris control from the camera and even VTR and return. So what you see here is um, it inherits the zoom rocker on the top. It gives you VTR and return buttons. It gives you the um, um, option for Fujinom zoom and focus demand connector. So you can use analog and digital demands. You have a Fujinom remote port. That's for example, for 
remote applications for driving it with uh, wireless face units, those internal motors, or even giving out um, raw encoder data. Then you have the ENG camera lens port, which goes to the camera for all the status update to the camera. And it needs extra power. So it's not being able to run through the standard ENG power. It needs a um, 10 to 30 volt power in. Next is the Magnum Lens Control System, which was uh, it is on the market for quite a few years now. But what we have done lately is we have developed a Cinelog remote and robotic integration. So what that means is use any kind of Cine lens and motorize them with our or third party motors and then get this Canon remote port simulation cable, which is basically the Canon um, 20 pin um, socket on those ENG um, lenses. And this way, any kind of remote or robotic um, application which talks the Canon lens protocol can control our Magnum and it feels like the same. Additionally, we have that open API for custom solutions. So we have customers as an example in Portugal, which have made a custom um, robotic head and um, all serial commands. It's an open API from us. You can, we can even get you motor access, functional access, or whatever you need. Um, you get that through our open API for any kind of developments you want to do. Next is the lens testing projector. With this one is very successful on the international market. I think all the presenters we have heard before now have our projectors in the factory or in the service department. So if you go to Ari, Engineer, Duke Laws, um, um, even um, Atlas lenses, they all have this projector um, working for them. It's offering large format LED illumination and it has this camera simulation glass. So it simulates the optical low pass filters or any kind of glass, which is nowadays within the digital cameras between the lens and the sensor. And um, you have heard it from Art, um, it's most important nowadays to design the lenses with this in, in the mind. Lately, um, we have improved our LDS um, um, metadata readout. So we are able to read ARI LDS data or ICOC metadata or the size extended data with our software. And it shows you here, you can even reprogram the owner of uh, the lens and um, compare it uh, with the internal encoder data with the readout of our laser distance module. And if it's all green up there, you're probably all fine, but if it turns white or red, then you know you should check your lens. You can run the size and cook software with it too. So you have an adapter cable. And then we have now developed the Canon EF and Sony e-electronics. So for those lenses, you need to um, activate image stabilization or give power to the motors to change iris or maybe the focus barrel. So that's within our projector. We have developed lately the Leica M and Canon RF mount for the projector. And new reticle test shots available on the engineer design and the autonomous design and before applications. We too offer the lens collimator. This was just shipped, for example, to Atlas. Um, it now inherits the universal large CLC mount. So you can swap lenses between the um, lens test projector and the collimator. And we offer those one, one and a half meter and two meter attachments to check your lenses, not only on infinity, but also on short distances. Yeah, the display is now black and white or color switchable. It offers like an M and RF mount, and we are offering out of reflex collimators with various targets and Simon stars too. And last but not least, we have developed this centering microscope with ARI. So this is for checking the centering of the reticle test shot in your lens test projector. And this is especially crucial for zoom centering or even for the um, anamorphic lenses. So that's it. Thank you very much. Um, would be great to see you later in the breakout room to discuss whatever you ha have questions about. We do have all those products here to, to have a look at in live. 
And if you want to reach out for us, you have the contact chart or here, crozy.com or follow us on social media. Thanks so much. Thanks, Very Tim. Really appreciate it. So next up is Eric Johnson from Cook. And Cook had some announcements today. So it's going to be kind of interesting to hear what Eric has to say. And please, everyone fill out the poll. There's only We only have 61% of the people here who filled out the poll. Please fill out the poll for us and allow us to get a better idea of where you're from, what you do, and everything else, because the poll is important to us. So, Eric, you there? I am. Can All righty, sir. There you are. All Hello, right. My friend. I will go the, ahead and share my screen. The stage is yours. Thank you, Gary. All right. Thank you, everybody, for being here. It's been an interesting, busy couple of days. We have had two product announcements as of last night. So there's a lot of exciting things going on here at Cook Optics, and I can't wait to tell you all about them. But before I do that, I would just like to show a quick 60-second reel of the work that Cook has been involved with um, for over 130 years. If anybody can name all these films, I will send you a Cook badge. So that is who we are and what we do is make lenses. And the reason that people choose our lenses is because of the cook look. The cook look is a number of different things. It's different things to different people, but you'll know it when you see it. Um, the cook look em encompasses dimensionality. It encompasses a uh, high contrast. It's pleasing to the eye. Mr. Ed Lockman um, has a nice quote here about what the cook look is to him. But again, it's something that you know it when you see it. And that's why cinematographers and, and creatives choose our lenses. Um, we've been doing this since the 1800s and we're innovators and we continue to innovate in the industry. Our product range is quite large. We have over 100 unique focal lengths of lenses, which is quite impressive. The traditional product range has encompassed Super 35 series primes, um, anamorphic primes, and more recently full frame series primes, and also full frame anamorphic primes. So there's a little bit of everything, and we also have some new stuff to talk about today. Um, Cook is award winning. We've won all the awards, um, including the Oscar, and that's not really for this presentation today, but we are certainly as a storied company. Our introductory set of lenses, if you want to call it that, would be the Mini S4s. These are uh, more affordable lenses, and they offer you everything with the exception of eye technology that our regular Cook lenses do. Um, they are one stop small, or excuse me, they are smaller than the S4s, and they are one stop slower than the S4 eyes. Um, so you do get that advantage of the, the smaller size, but it comes at a, at a cost of the slower lens. The S4 lenses, most of you are probably familiar with those. These were uh, introduced in 1998 at this time. And really, I, you'd be hard pressed to find a rental house across the world that doesn't have a set of Cook S4s. 
five eyes, these are our speed lenses. These are our true T.14 lenses. So if that is something that you need to help you to tell your story, to see in the dark, we certainly can provide those lenses as well. Uh, the Pancro Eye Classic, which we'll be talking a little bit further about today, these were introduced a few years back along with our full frame lenses. And the idea behind this was to bring back that vintage speed Pancro look that a lot of creatives were looking for at the time. We also are the world's premier anamorphic provider. I think we've got at least 350 sets of two times anamorphic sets out in the world now, which is quite impressive. And we have uh, also introduced recently anamorphic full frame plus lenses, which are true front anamorph lenses with a full frame. It's a, it's a completely new optical design, but it encompasses some of the design elements of our two times anamorphic lenses and also our full frame prime lenses. And these have a 1.8 times um, squeeze ratio rather than a two point times. And that has to do with the format and the full frame coverage. And finally, we had our S7 lenses. Those of you that are familiar with the S4s will certainly be familiar with the S7s. Um, you will find them right at home. They are very familiar to you. They just simply have a larger image circle for today's new modern sensors. And so I'm sure most of you are here today for the cook presentation, that is. What do you want to know is what's new? All of this stuff you've, you've seen before, you've heard about, and what is new? Well, let me tell you. We have three new things. We have a, a macro line, which is not introduced today. This has been introduced uh, about a month ago, and it is a true one-to-one -one macro. It's a dedicated lens series. We have three lenses, a 60, 90, and a 150. Um, they're complementary to the existing Cook lens series, which means that they can be intercut with any of the modern lenses that we offer including the anamorphics, even though we do offer an anamorphic uh, macro as well. They have been optimized. They all encompass the cook look and exceptionally low lateral color residual aberration and color fringing around the pixels. And so what does that mean? It means that they are very sharp lenses for macro work, which is something that you certainly would want in your macro. Um, it's all spherical elements, which uh, gives us a nice cat's eye bokeh. And here's just a picture from an event that we had done recently using the lens. It's worked very well, very nice. Here's a little animation, which we won't go through today. And here are the specs that if anybody wants to talk about more in the breakout room, we certainly can. But you can see these are 2.5 to T22 lenses. And moving right along, here was the big announcement, one of the two big announcements from last night. We had the vintage Pancro Eye Classics, which were a reimagination of the vintage speed Pancros. These were Super 35 lenses on the wide side. We've now introduced full frame versions of these wide lenses. So these 18, 21, 25, 27, 32, um, up to the 50 millimeter, we have redesigned these lenses. We still have the, the regular Super 35 ones available, but we also have the full frame available now as well. So the 65 on up, they covered full frame into the set, but if you wanted to expand your existing set or create a new set that covers all full frame, we have that option available now. Um, these were a modern redesign of the legendary Cook, Sp Cook Speed Pancros. They all have the Cook look. What's nice about these is I know people like their vintage lenses, but vintage lenses, they're never color matched. It's incredibly hard to find spare parts and all of this other stuff. So you're getting that vintage look in a modern lens housing, which is, which is actually very nice and spare parts are available for it. Little animation here of the Pancro. It's a smaller lens in comparison to some of our other line. And here are the specs, a lot of specs for these, but the important ones, T2.2 to 22, and then they do get a little bit slower towards the end of the range. And anyway, we can talk about this further in a breakout room. And then the big announcement, at least where I, I thought was the big announcement, was the Cook Veritol, because I have been with Cook Optics now for going on about five years. And since day one that I started taking these lenses around, people said, will you please make the 18 to 100 again? So we listened to our customers and it's not an 18 to 100. We actually made you two lenses. We made you a 30 to 95 and an 85 to 215. And this, just like the Pancro Classics were, is a modern reimagination of that classic and beloved Cook Veritol zoom lens. Uh, Cook look, as with all of our lenses, uh, color balance and color matching. These are specifically matched 
in resolution and fall off to the S7 line. Now that doesn't mean you can't use them with our other lenses. However, they were specifically intended to be used in companion with the S7 lenses, our full frame offerings. Um, these are 2.9 and of course full frame. And because of what they are, we took into account all of the handheld shooting situations as much as we possibly could and tried to optimize these for not only handheld, but steady cam and gimbal use. And here is our fancy animation. You see, it's not too much of a beast coming from, from Cook Optics. We wanna make sure you certainly get your money's worth here. Beautiful lens. Here are the specs. If I would have filled in the rest of them, I can certainly do that before the breakout room. But you can see again, the, the big takeaway here, T 2.9 to 22 to the zoom range, and they're about four kilograms um, in weight. So just very quickly, a couple of things, resources that you might want to check out. We have Shot on Cook, and Shot on Cook is a archive of just some of the wonderful work that has been done on our lenses. It's something that if you're interested in a specific thing, it can be sorted by lens type and production type and these kinds of things. And if that isn't your bag, you can go over to Cook Optics TV, which this is a camera and lens agnostic um, television channel that really just concentrates on the art and craft of cinematography. And again, it's lens agnostic, so it encompasses all of the manufacturers. So as I said, this has been a busy couple of days. I feel like I've had some really big sandals to fill, but it's been very exciting introducing these products. Um, my name is Eric Johnston, and if you have any questions, please feel free to get in touch with me directly, or you can email us at lenses at cookoptics.com, and we're happy to answer any questions that you may have. So thank you very much. Thank you, sir. Appreciate it, Eric. And always good to have new info. Next up is Matt Duclos, who's going to talk about lens charts and accessories and the other things that Duclos Lenses makes for our industry. Matthew, are you there? I am here. It's you. Thank you, Gary. You're on, sir. Uh, I do not have a slideshow. I do not have any fancy material, so I'll keep it uh, relatively quick. Uh, so thank you, Berg, for having us. Um, so yeah, originally they reached out and asked if I would talk about focus charts, but uh, it's not a super exciting topic. So I figure I'll, I'll touch on that a little bit, but for the most part, keep it pretty short. Um, the focus charts are just one of the, the products that we offer. Uh, our primary business always has been, always will be servicing and maintaining motion picture lenses. Uh, that's the core of our business. Um, and then obviously, You mean the host muted me. Am I good oh. now? Yeah. Okay. Um, so yeah, do close lenses sells pretty much all of the lens manufacturers you're seeing here today as well, uh, with the exception of a couple. Um, and then obviously the, the other bits that we're known for the custom tuning, the detuning, uh, modifications, pretty much any solution you would need for a, a cinema lens. Um, so to keep the focus chart part quick and simple, that really, uh, it really started as us wanting to just have a really, really high quality focus chart for ourselves in house. And we reached out to a couple different manufacturers and nobody could really give us the quality or the, the specifics that we wanted for our own focus chart. And so along that process of trying to make a chart, we realized, well, if nobody can do what we want, we might as well just do it ourselves. So we ended up buying specialty equipment and designed our own focus chart from the ground up. And like I said, initially, we just wanted to make it for ourselves. And then a couple of people came in and saw it and said, hey, I want one of those. So we made a couple more and then they showed them their friends and so on and so forth. So now it's probably one of the most common focus charts you'll see, at least here on the, east, on the uh, West Coast. So, uh, the, the chart's a, a custom design. There's a couple different varieties. We do a standard spherical and a standard anamorphic. Then we do a large spherical and a large anamorphic. Um, obviously, the anamorphic style can be used for spherical as well. It just has different shaped um, Air Force targets. So you see the squeeze. Uh, and the, the other convenient part, because we do all of the design and all of the printing in-house, is they're all customizable. So you know, if somebody wants one thing tweaked or they want their their uh, their branding printed onto it, um, it's super simple. We do it all in-house. Um, 
that's pretty much it for the focus charts. Uh, uh, I don't really have a whole lot else to talk about. So I, I'll give up the rest of my time to whoever's next. Oh, I know you've got some stuff. I mean, you already got pushed for extension tubes here, which I uh, yeah. Know. I mean, you'll probably hear of our stuff from several other manufacturers. I gave everyone a little kickback every time they mention a Duclos Lenses product in their presentation. So I think I owe Art. I'll probably owe Stosh in a minute here. <laughs> um, I mean, yeah, that's, there's a whole bunch of other little things we do. The extension tubes are very popular. As Art mentioned earlier, it's a super simple solution for getting super close focus. Um, it's one of those products that everyone just has in the bag. Why not? It works on every lens. It doesn't, there's no cost to it really. It's, it's just a fantastic solution. Yeah. yeah, it sure is. Um, just so everybody knows, uh, thank you, Matt. Really appreciate it. Um, everybody's been asking about the polls. Uh, to activate the poll when you've come late to the session is actually down in the bottom of your frame. You can actually see it at the very bottom. It says polls. You click on that and it'll come up. Um, if we launch the poll and you aren't in here, it won't be here. Stosh, are you there? Are you ready to go to talk about the Promistas? Yes, sir, I am. Thank you very much. It's all you, my friend. You got me. All right, let's set up this share and get ready to rock. Stream one, thank you very much, Gary, and Team Filmscape, of course. Uh, thanks to Anna and um, and Harry and the team at PERG. Uh, this is fantastic to have this opportunity to share with everyone. I'm Stosh from uh, Fujifilm, Fujinon uh, line of Cine Zooms. We'll just dive right in. First up is an update on our Promistas. Uh, we are certainly excited uh, to share the 19 to 45 that came online in the early days of the COVID lockdown that rounds out the family uh, with the nice uh, smaller, lighter weight, wide, consistent uh, 46.3 mil image circles uh, across the board, 114 mil front. So when you're sending these lenses out uh, in your packages, it's consistent, smaller filters, matte boxes, the same for all three, make things easy. Um, the two top 120 to, to 180 to 50, same size, same weight, same balance points. So again, if you're putting these on and off different, uh, different rigs, nice and easy. Um, uh, uh, the, uh, the wide angle, a little bit uh, smaller and lighter weight uh, than the other two, really trying to get that out into the, into the stabilized world under the steady cams, make that a little bit easier, being a little bit smaller and a little bit shorter and a little bit lighter weight. Uh, nice, great close focuses, as you can see. So again, as I was saying, uh, that common gear placement, they all have the, uh, the back focus adjustments, greatly reduced breathe, uh, breathing, all, all that, uh, that common uh, Fujinon cinematic look. Um, uh, we've, uh, the feedback we've gotten in terms of uh, intercutting these with uh, Prime, certainly the, uh, the Supremes and the Signatures, uh, we're getting great feedback from that side. They are native PL and we do have an LPL solution that we can talk about in the breakout if anyone would like to. Um, so a true cinematic set, uh, really no compromise on the quality uh, when we partner these with, uh, when we complement these to the zooms, out, uh, to the primes. Uh, they are all of course matching. We're covering 19 to 250 in the three lenses. Again, same front diameter, same size, ident identical ring positions. All about speed, getting these on and off uh, your camera quickly and easily. Um, and of course, it has the uh, lens metadata in there, so that the basic flash eye or the extended data uh, from uh, that from Zeiss. So, if you're needing to take advantage of that, um, you know, distortion or uh, illumination uh, compensation within the uh, extended data, that's all there. We'll touch on that in a few slides. So, when we're using these, we're going to speed things up, reduce contact. Uh, you know, that that is still relevant. Uh, Minimize the changes. We're going to make it quick and easy when you do need to do it. And we're going to make things more efficient relative to that metadata. Uh, you know, I mentioned a few times uh, part, uh, uh, matching these up with the highest end primes out there. This is a test that was shot that you can find on our YouTube channel or our Vimeo channel. This was shot in the early days of, of the COVID. Lockdown. The, the goal here was really to showcase the performance of these zooms. It, it, it was set up as a blind test with a high-end set of primes, just to see if you could tell the difference. So I would encourage you to go check that out. 
we really want to inspire that confidence in using the Fujinon Zooms at the highest levels, uh, not to think that using these Fujinon Zooms are a compromise relative to the optical performance. Uh, so again, you can see that you can see that test online uh, uh, on those channels uh, there. Uh, if uh, testing is something you want to do, certainly uh, it's mostly rental houses being a perg event here. If your rental house isn't on this list and you've recently acquired a Permisa, please let uh, Tom Fletcher or myself know. We'll get you added to it. Uh, if you happen to be a guest of a rental house that's here and wants to test some of these lenses, certainly reach out to your, your uh, local rental um, uh, solutions provider. Uh, if they don't have the lenses in stock, certainly we're happy to support that from Fuji's side. Uh, anyone on our team, we still, uh, you know, the, the Fuji team's here to help. Miles and Josh and Susan, Brett, myself, uh, certainly Tom from the marketing side, we're all still here and excited to uh, support the market. Uh, metadata, just want to touch briefly on that. This, uh, we, we like this picture, kind of the early days of metadata. You know, this was uh, something spearheaded by Chuck Lee. For those of you who don't know Chuck Lee, who ran the west coast of Fuji, really the father of Fuji Cine, uh, most would say has retired. So uh, if you happen to be in a national park somewhere, uh, keep your eyes open. He's been doing lots of hiking uh, around the country. But anyways, uh, back to the metadata. This is how we did it in the early days, right? The, uh, the motors of the encoders, we had to translate all that and get it back down onto the tape. Of course, technology has moved forward since those early days. Uh, these uh, premises all have uh, encoders built in and we're sending that uh, metadata either through the slash I or through the uh, the four pin limo here. It certainly provides a lot of efficiencies uh, through the uh, production workflows, especially as we move into the virtual space uh, these days. Uh, again, uh, uh, like I said, that, uh, that, that one's there too. Uh, and, and again, uh, this isn't new for anyone these days, but, but the, you know, the new virtual, the LED worlds, having that metadata, that live, that accurate uh, uh, lens uh, info flowing uh, from the lens is super helpful, provides lots of efficiencies and streamlines your, your workflows. Uh, with that, I won't go too far into this. Tim certainly touched on that. We're, we're real excited that we now, uh, or we will shortly have uh, a sample in the US that we'll be able to test, really expanding the versatility of all three of these lenses. The same drive fits on all three, uh, really maximize the, uh, the value of your investment in those and open the versatility of the full frame, the large format Promistas to match what you can do with the Cabrios that you have in house as well. So you can plug those same controls in, as, as Tim uh, mentioned, uh, use it in a pedestal tripod environment. You can plug your robotic uh, heads, your, um, uh, your remote heads into there and control it right from the, um, from the servo pack that's on the side. And there, it's not at a cost of, uh, of losing metadata or anything. It passes all that through and away you go. So we will have a sample, hopefully Tim still, uh, by the end of the year, and we look forward to uh, to getting that in for uh, for testing uh, uh, upon demand. Quickly, uh, something new uh, that we discovered uh, <laughs> or, or that's been happening certainly is the use of Super Thirty Five in uh, new markets, be it sports, be it multicam, live uh, live production. So this is a lens that was developed at the 35 to 700 mil. It's a native PL mount. So uh, this is something that was put together uh, for a special project in Japan. Uh, and we've, uh, as you can see here, it's a, a 35 to 700. It has an internal 1.4 times extender that uh, gets you to 49 to 980, uh, which will cover some of the large formats should you choose to do that. And it's, a T, it's an F2.8. Uh, uh, and then it does roll off like these big lenses do to a, to a 4.8 at 700 mil. How do we get it so fast and so long? Of course, it's a real big front element. If we talk about those Promises, those are 114. This is a 220 millimeter front element capturing a ton of light. We've been real busy with this lens, just, just uh, showing uh, the uses of it uh, out of the gate. Sports has been real popular. If any of you are familiar with the Sony HTC 4800, it's a high speed sports uh, broadcast camera. We've had this all over. Uh, Tom has been super busy uh, getting this uh, lens out into the field, uh, unboxing. The beauty of this is we're bringing this shallow depth of field into new markets. 
as you can see, uh, baseball, uh, basketball, football, boxing. Uh, we're seeing this on the sidelines at NFL games, um, uh, and, and even up uh, up further away, looking down looking downfield. We've also had some great tests over in Europe with our friends at Airy. Uh, sadly, we don't have the uh, the uh, permissions to show any content from those tests, but they were really well received there. The beauty uh, of those tests, they were really looking for lenses with this kind of length that could provide better dynamic range, color fidelity, and they're loving what they're getting out of that, uh, certainly from an HDR perspective. Uh, of course, uh, concerts, entertainment, house of worship, we're seeing some great uh, feedback there. So again, uh, expanding the, the, the reach for uh, investment in, in these Super 35 uh, format lenses into a lot of new verticals and having tool sets that, that enable uh, production as they expected to have it uh, previously. Uh, last but not least, a shout out to Matthew, to the team at Do Close Lens. So I'm looking for my kickback here shortly. Uh, the, uh, the MK lenses. So uh, many of you uh, have invested in the MK lenses for your emails. Uh, the team at Duclos Lens has made a non-destructive uh, modification to the lenses to enable uh, the use of these lenses on the RF mount cameras. So here you see a bunch of pictures uh, on the Komodo camera. Uh, these are shipping now, they're ready to go. Uh, and certainly um, uh, we would encourage you to, uh, to test them, play with them. And, and certainly it's a real affordable uh, investment in real high-end optics uh, in an RF uh, short flange environment as well. And that wraps it up. Just a quick one, the Promistas, uh, just so everyone knows, uh, we certainly deliveries are much improved than they were. We're pretty much caught up. Certainly reach out to your, your favorite Fuji person. Uh, if you do need them, uh, we can probably make deliveries where, where, you know, we're weeks now, not months and months. So we're real excited to get more of those in the field. We're uh, extremely thankful for your support. And there's my email. Should anyone need me? I think Harry got all the contact stuff in the chat. Thank you very much. And I take this back over now. <laughs> We're going to do a little bit of something different with this one. Um, what we have on, on this one is uh, Seth Emmons is traveling today. So we actually pre-recorded his video. Um, and uh, we're going to go that and show this. And then Seth is actually on the phone with us, going to jump on at the very end. So we're going to watch this little video and we'll go. For, I mean, let me actually reset this for one second. Stop share. I want to make sure I did this right so that I can do two things here. Operator error on my end. So, so let's play the video and uh, we'll, everybody can see this and I'll get off the air. Hi, my name is Seth Emmons. I am the Director of Communications at Ernst Lights Wetzler, the manufacturer of the Lights Cine lenses. I want to thank PERG first for inviting us to address this group and for all the work that they do within the community. And now let's get into what is new with Lights. And the newest thing from Lights is a line of Cine Prime lenses that we announced at the end of September called the Lights LC cine lenses. These lenses are designed to be a market sensitive mix of size, speed, performance, format, and price. Our retail price for those is expected to be around 19,000 euros or 21 to 22,000 dollars per lens. And they will begin delivering at the uh, in Q2 of 2022 uh, in a group of five focal lengths and with more focal lengths coming later in the year. Now, the first question that we always get is how do these lenses compare to the existing lights lenses? So here we have a chart that we use to describe our lens offerings. On the left side, you can see the lights Sumalux C lenses, as well as the newer lights prime lenses. And these lenses fall into our performance driven category where size, speed, and edge to edge image quality were the paramount design factors and all other factors came after that. Then on the right side, we have our legacy optics, which use Leica still photography glass to bring those unique looks into the world of moving images. We have our Thalia lenses for large format, as well as other formats. And then the M0.8 lenses, which have been extremely popular this year. Now, when it came time to design the LC lenses, we identified a gap here, and we knew that we had to uh, address that in some way. And that is where LC fits in. 
So the LC lenses were designed to fill the gap in our character lenses and the full frame format. And these lenses are specifically designed for cinematography, but instead of edge to edge performance, we specified a more rounded image in keeping with the market trend of vintage lenses and detuned optics. But of course we did it in the lights way. So the effect is present, but understated. Now, performance wise, they still have the typical lights, warm skin tone, friendly color temperature and high resolution throughout most of the frame. But the resolution and illumination start to drop off delicately toward the edge of the frame, giving a sense of dimensionality without being aggressive about it. And these lenses also allow the user to play more with flares as opposed to some of the more strongly corrected lenses like the lights primes. Now the LC lenses here, you can see some of the details in the focal lengths there. They are designed for full frame or large format coverage, but they do illuminate well beyond that. They all feature a consistent T2.1 aperture through all the focal lengths and a 90, 95 millimeter front diameter for everything except for the wides and the longs. Now, to achieve this performance while maintaining a small size and competitive price, we decided to make the lenses in LPL mount only. Now that reduced flange depth allowed us to achieve this mix of factors within the target price of approximately 19,000 euros per lens. And now while the LC lenses are the first ones we've manufactured with an LPL mount exclusively, we do have three other lines of lenses that have LPL mount options, which are the lights primes, the lights zooms, and the Talia lenses. And all of those lenses can have their mount changed by a lens technician at any rental facility. Why did we go LPL mount? Well, we believe that interchangeable mounts will become the standard for professional cinematography cameras and that eventually other lens companies will follow suit and start to offer more LPL mount optic options. Now, switching gears slightly, we'll just talk briefly about the light zooms. These zooms are now delivering regularly and are available. At 45,000 euros per lens, each has the look, feel, and color temperature that matches excellently with all the rest of our prime lenses, regardless of format. And the option to switch from PL to LPL mount also gives them flexibility now and into the future. As far as the lights primes go, their use continues to grow as more and more people get a chance to use them. Uh, if you haven't had a chance to see them in your own facility, please reach out to us. We'd be happy to get some to you to test and demo for your clients. Um, now, as time is short in this presentation, I'm going to move on to some things that were recently shot on lights lenses. Uh, Prom is a great example. It's one of the first features shot on the lights primes by Matty Lebetique. And the color rendition, the skin tones that are used in this, this film really show the wide range that the lights primes are capable of. Serrano is a film by Seamus McGarvey where he used the lights primes and the lights zooms and that'll be coming out next month as well as screening at the Camera Image Film Festival. Uh, Seamus's feedback to us was that what he loved was the absolute neutrality of the lenses where he could then use lighting and set design to build new looks and if you watch the film you'll notice there's three distinct looks that are used throughout the film and they're the same lenses throughout just uh, different lighting different set design choices. Uh, the Hulu series, Only Murders in the Building, was shot about 50-50 on lights primes and lights zooms. And then 95% of principal photography on the Suicide Squad, which was lensed by Henry Brom, he used his favorite lenses, which are the lights M0.8 lenses. And in fact, he just wrapped up on the flash using those lenses as the A-camera hero lenses as well. So I want to say thank you for having us here today to discuss what's new. Uh, if you'd like more information about light cine lenses, please do check out our website, reach out to your regional sales manager, or feel free to contact me directly. I'm happy to answer any questions you might have, set up opportunities for you to see lenses you might not have a, had a chance to see yet, and answer any technical questions. Um, thank you for your time, appreciate you. <laughs> Thanks, Seth. I, I think we can get Seth on the phone here. Um, if I come back, uh, he's on dial up. So we got to do some things. Seth, are you there? I'm on video actually. Oh, hey, you're on video <laughs> under a different name. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. How are you doing? Good, sir. Anything to add? Um, no, you know, I, I botched the recording the first time, so I had a chance to do it a second time and got everything in there. Um, 
but yeah, we're excited to head off to uh, Camera Image now and show off these lenses uh, in the real world. And then I'm going to bring back a demo lens with me afterwards. So I'll have a lens in the U.S. for people to take a look at. So we're, we're going to let cut you free so that we can get to the next presentation. So hopefully you'll be able to be in some of the breakout rooms later on. But thank you for your time, Seth. Right on. Thank you. Okay. Michael Burnham from Musashi Optical is going to talk about their new tools and technology here. Michael, are you there? Yes, I am. Excellent, sir. The stage is yours. Thank you. Thank you very much for having me. Um, really appreciate the invitation. And why am I not on video? Mm, we see you. <laughs> okay. Okay, then fine. <laughs> we see you. We don't see a screen, but we see oh, you. Okay, I see, I see the screen. All right. So this is what I'm going to talk about today. Spend a few minutes talking about it. This is the Takumi 2. This is our third lens in the Takumi series. Uh, Takumi in Japanese means artisan. So this is our artisan lens series. And this is our 29 to 120 T 2.9 constant. It uses an all spherical design, which renders a very, very classic look. Um, it's very delicate. It's uh, a little on the low contrast side, even though it's very sharp. So that allows you to uh, have more editing options later, retain more detail on the sensor those sort of things. So it's just a very good, everybody that's used this or tested it has talked about its natural rendering. Its flare is very smooth and natural. It's roll off between fo in focus, out of focus areas, very smooth flare, very uh, smooth and natural also. So just a natural lens with a very classic rendering. Um, it does have uh, back focus adjustment. There is coming a set screw for, to replace that if you don't want that. So that's an option. And you can see it's a big 136 front there. So this is our, this is our latest one. This is the third lens in the series. There's, this, this joins the um, Takumi Super 35, which is an 8X zoom, and the Takumi 1, which is a 40 to 132 telephoto. Uh, this is the T29, and so is the Takumi Super 35. So that gives you an 8x zoom with a constant T29 aperture. And then the Takumi 1 telephoto is a constant T4.8. So if anybody wants to take a look at these, if anyone has any questions about it, of course, I'll be in a breakout room. So I'd love to see you. And then from here, we're going to announce an accessory. So I'm going to try to share my screen. Let's see how that goes. Can you see that? Not yet. Not yet? Uh, shift to, no. There we go. There you go. All right. So, so some people may have seen this on social media. And today we are announcing the new, a new accessory. This is an extender. So that is our Optimore uh, full frame 1.4. It is uh, PL mount to PL mount, and it will cover a uh, large format. So RELF open gate or um, this division, no problem, as well as full frame sensors. So some features of this, the highlight reel, uh, it's for full frame, large format and this division. So uh, the coverage on the uh, image circle is 46.3, which will cover all those sensors. Magnifies the focal length of the lens by 1.4. So it gives you a little more reach, but it, you only sacrifice one T-stop of light to get that reach. And it comes in a standard PL mounts. And it's compatible with Super 35 uh, lenses, film, as well as digital. So it's a very sharp converter. Uh, we're already known. So this is the second uh, large format converter. The 2X was announced earlier this year. So that's been shipping for several months now. And now we have the new uh, 1.4 that's gonna be shipping sometime in December. So we're looking forward to that very much. I was hoping to do this whole thing manual so that I would have one here to show you, but apparently I'll get my first sample next week. So this adds to our uh, extender line. So we now have two large formats and two Super 35 uh, extenders. We also have a full line of five or six um, expanders available, a 1.7 that goes up to large format, 
uh, 1.4 expander that goes to uh, full frame, but not quite large format. And of course with expanders, it's, uh, a, uh, it's always a question on the lens. So um, Duclos is our partner with all of these. So uh, be happy to hit them up. They are available to sale for sale through Duclos. And we're very happy to be working with them. The lens um, that I've got here is, hang on a second, where is my pointer? Anyway, the lens is uh, also available through them as well. All the lenses, all Musashi Optical products are available through Duclos. Um, I'll be in the breakout room at the end. So if you have any other questions, I in, invite you to join and we will see you then, or you can hit me up on email. Thanks, Michael, that's great. Appreciate it. So next up is Snehal Patel from Zeiss. And while we're thinking about that, a couple things to remember for everybody is that next weekend is the panel, as I said before, and we've got some, you know, with Michael Cioni and Brandon Cooper from First Mile Technologies and uh, Stefan Ukas Bradley from, from Airy, just to talk about what's coming in the future of all of this. Um, Snehal, you're up. You should be able to take over there, my friend. Hello, how's everyone doing? Can you hear me? There he is. We can hear you. Look good, my friend. Oh, thank you. Great. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and share my presentation over here. So let's share a screen. All right, we'll get right into it. So today, what we're going to talk about is uh, Zeiss Supreme Prime Radiance lenses, because this year we added some focal lengths to the line to really complete it, to make it a really nice, usable set of lenses. And this is the lens set that everyone's excited about. A lot of people are asking about, of course, our regular Supreme Prime lenses are quite popular and being used on a lots and lots of different productions. Uh, but you know, the Radiance lenses, we offer a different look that you can get from the lenses that's a little unique uh, out there. So we're just gonna go over that really quickly. They are all T15 from 18 to 135. There are 11 focal lanes uh, available and uh, they're full frame plus, meaning that they give a little bit more coverage than just full frame so that you can easily use them on a DXL2 camera from Panavision, Monstro sensor or the upcoming uh, sensor from RED that's coming out uh, early next year. Um, there's a Raptor XL, it'll work on that as well. So that's the, the size um, coverage that we have. <clears throat> so let's get right into it. Uh, the first thing that we wanna talk about is that the lens is being used on a lot of productions. So there's a lot of stuff that's come out already and a lot of stuff that's still yet to come out. Uh, feature films, television shows, commercials, music videos. Uh, the first television show to use the lens ever, uh, the Radiance lens set was Fargo season four, Dana Gonzalez, who was the DP that actually chose the lenses uh, for the product, uh, for the production, was uh, you know already fans uh, of the Supreme Prime lenses. And this modified version of the Supreme Primes really fit in with the storyline. So you're seeing a lot of new productions that are out. You can go to our YouTube playlist. All you have to do is look for Zeiss Cinematography uh, in YouTube. And we actually have a playlist called Shot on Supreme Prime Radiance and another one for Shot on Supreme Prime, Shot on CP3. And you can see productions and projects that were utilizing the lenses. And there's quite a few productions out there. So what was the point of the lens? Well, you know, we wanted to do something that was unique because cinematographers like to have choices. Yes, there is a, a desire for a nice clean palette that you can use filters and, and LUTs on and create your own unique look. But sometimes you want to look that the lens itself will give you some kind of filtered look or some kind of aberration or some kind of flare, you know, which is very popular. And so what we wanted to do was create a unique lens that fit into that category. So it's, you know, it's a mainstream lens. It works like a modern lens. It works exactly like a Supreme Prime. It has the appeal of, you know, the vintage type of look with the lens flare characteristics, but it's reliable and all the lenses match with one another. And rentals really want to offer this special characteristic, as I knew we mentioned before in a previous presentation, rentals are looking for ways to get in the door these uh, cinematographers that want something unique with their own signature on the image that doesn't get dialed out in color correction. And of course, having an ability to have a lens that has flare characteristics is really great because with the Supreme Primes, you get beautiful controlled flares. But if you want something a little bit more extreme or you want to have a little bit uh, more interesting look, the Radiance gives it to you in spades. So the performance is exactly the same. So both lenses of Supremes and the Radiance are T15 lenses, all of them from 18 to 135. And in this uh, 11 lens set, you have this match flare characteristic that's really different than just a regular Supreme Prime. You can use an LPL mount. So we do have an option to go LPL. So you can go native on Alexa Mini or Alexa LF. So you don't have to put the adapter in there. It gives you great performance. 
and it has the metadata capabilities and, and communication as well. Uh, what's great about this lens is that unlike a vintage set of lenses, all the focal lengths from 18 to 135 have characteristics in terms of the flares that are really similar. They they're work with one another. So you don't just have one lens in the series, like a focal length that flares really well and another one that doesn't, which is a problem that you find with vintage lenses that you don't really have that consistency across the whole line. You also don't have consistency sometimes in the color, the color rendition or the exposure rendition. And, it's, and you know, really want that consistency in a modern lens because you're dealing with high quality digital camera systems most of the time, and even film, which is processed in much better uh, fashion now than ever before. So you see everything. So it's nice to have a lens where you can have consistency And this next slide kind of shows you that it's almost like I'm using the same big zoom lens, you know, just going in from 15 or 18 all the way to 135 and just using the same lens. But in reality, these are all 11 different focal lengths that all work with one another in conjunction you can jump from one angle to another, one focus to uh, one, you know, uh, uh, focal length to another and have a great match and they work well within one another. And then also, what did we want this to be used for? Well, we see this as like the premium lens series that's used for the high end. So if you're a rental house and you're trying to figure out, well, what category of lens this is, you know, this lens is about 10% more in price point than a Supreme Prime lens. So it's not super, you know, more expensive, but certainly targeting a higher end production, high end commercials, music videos, feature films, big blockbusters, high end streaming, you know, auteur films, something that has interesting looks, an artistic bent, uh, and that's something that a cinematographer really wants to put their signature look onto. Now, why is this better than, let's say, an option of going with the vintage lens? You know, there's no better or worse. You know, it's all up to you to decide. And of course, the cinematographer to decide what they want to do. But I'll tell you what, you don't have a lot of focal length choices when you go with the vintage lens set. You also have the ability to, I mean, you have the ability to rehouse the lens, but a lot of the lenses that are on the market don't have the ergonomics. They don't have the build quality that you really need for the modern day with the motors and the, the way that we use the lenses today on a set compared to, let's say, 20, 30 years ago. So, and it's good to have the coverage because we're talking about full frame plus. We're talking about a larger image circle that works well with cameras like the Alexa LF, LF Mini, the Monstro DXL2, Sony Venice, and of course the new upcoming Sony camera as well. So all this is a great option, you know, and a, a really nice uh, offering that we have that kind of fits into this market that fulfills the demand of the cinematographer, but also gives you a lens you can keep for 40 years and always service and you know, has this ice quality in the look that you're used to. So what are the good things that people like about the Supremes that are in the radiance? Well, the gentle sharpness, the elegant bokeh, which is really the out of focus shapes because of the 16 blade iris or the 18 blade iris in the larger, in the larger lenses. And then of course the high speed, T15. I mean, they're really fast lenses and they work great for super 35, for full frame, for any camera system you want to put them on. You're going to have a T15 lens. I mean, that's, that's, that's a feed in itself in the full frame plus category. So that's the other great thing about these lenses. And they're modern and they're, you know, really reminiscent of some of the cool Zeiss lenses in the past and also vintage lenses from other manufacturers. Uh, what is the resulting effect because we had the blue flare characteristics? Well, you get a slightly warmer tone overall compared to a regular Supreme Prime. So that's really the big difference between the two lenses. If you're using both lenses in the same, same A camera situation, you're not really trying to flare anything, just get a, you know, a proper image out of it. In, in that case, the Supreme Prime will be neutral and the radiance will be a little bit warmer. Here's another slide that kind of compares the two so you can see the difference in skin tone. And of course, for a lot of applications, people love those warmer skin tones. And instead of having to put that, you know, through a computer and dial it in with a LUT, you know, you're getting it already optically, which is really baked into the image and gives you a nice deep uh, look in it that you can work with. So what's the difference in phys physicality between the two lenses? Both the Supremes and the regular and, and the Radiance are exactly the same, size, shape, weight, uh, T-stop, everything. And what's nice is that you can actually identify a Radiance quite quickly. It has a stamp that says Radiance on it. It's written on there. It says T-star blue and not just T-star. And then it has a gold ring in the back, which is really helpful because when you're on set, you know you don't always have a lot of lighting and you go reach for the lens on the, on the camera cart. And now you can just look really quickly and see the gold ring and know that it's a radiance. Why is this important? Sometimes you day play radiance lenses and mix them in with Supremes, or you want to have one set of each for different looks. 
and this way you can do that. But if you want to use the radiance for your A camera lens as your main lens, you absolutely can because if you don't push light directly into the lens, it's not going to flare because we don't recode or do any coding difference on the front element. So it's not uncoded. It's not going to like just you know decontrast and change your image. It's going to look exactly the same like a regular Supreme Prime until you really push light through the optics into multiple uh, lens elements inside the lens. That's the only time it's really going to flare. So you can use it in either fashion. Uh, we have 11 focal lengths from 18 to 135, 18, 21, 25, 29, 40, 50, 65, 85, 100, 135. All really good usable focal lengths, nice magnifications, really great quality. Um, they're lightweight. And you know the, one, the 18 and the 135 are 114 fronts and all the rest of the lenses are 95 fronts. And as you can see, they weigh like you know three and a half to four pounds for most of the lenses. And the two larger ones are only five pounds. So it's fast and it's lightweight. You know, it gives you amazing quality. It's proven in the field. People love Supremes and Radiance. It's a go-to lens for a lot of camera combinations. And of course, we have the lens metadata, which we won awards for. And this lens metadata we're using for visual effects, for virtual production, stitching together multiple camera angles, and of course, volumetric and 3D applications. We're developing new tools all the time. Right now, we're heavy into helping support virtual production with new tools and software and hardware coming in the future. And at the same time, we're improving our, our chops with visual effects by helping with the shading and distortion characteristics, which are integral for having easy to use uh, visual effects images. And we have more tools coming out that's gonna make us even more compatible with a wide range of cameras within the next year. So we're really pushing hard for this. We, we feel like it's important for example, in virtual production, right now you have to spend 45 minutes to an hour to calibrate each lens that you're gonna use from a set for the production, and that's a lot of time. If we can cut that time down to five minutes, that's exactly what we're looking for. And on top of that, having the additive uh, blur characteristics when you're focusing, so that when you pull focus and your depth of field that you, know, you see in real life can be emulated again on a green screen setting or LED stage, this is the kind of future that we're looking for. And we're working hard with our partners. And Stash mentioned earlier that we work with Fujinon as well. And Gary Adcock himself actually has been working on a Synchrolink box that we've been using uh, to integrate with Unreal Engine. So really we're working with the community and, and working together, not because you know, we think it's, it's a big money maker, but because we think that the community really deserves this kind of uh, compatibility. Um, and then if you wanna order Supreme Primes, we have limited the lenses to just sets because guess what? That's what works for rentals, sub-rentals, and for the cinematographer. If you call for a set of radiance, more than likely you'll get all 11 lenses. The diamond set, most of our, vast majority of our owners of Supreme Radiance lenses actually own or have ordered uh, the completion set, the Ruby set, so they can have the diamond set of all 11 lenses. So if you're a rental house and you suddenly get a job and the television show needs two sets and you own one, when you call the other rental house, all you have to say is, I want a set of radiance, and you get all the lenses. And what is better than that? You don't have to make five phone calls and ask people for focal lengths, and everyone gets to have the revenue in because they're renting the whole set with all the focal lengths together. It's one of our most successful lines that we've had that is really rental house friendly. And of course, the cinematographers love it because they get the choices that they want. So they don't have to argue with the producer like, well, give me eight focal lengths instead of you know seven or you know, give me two more focal lengths I need, I need the wide. The conversation doesn't have to happen. If they decide to have radiance lenses, they're probably getting all of them. So it's kind of the greatest kind of way to uh, get it out into the market. The job of a cinematographer is to choose the elements and the tools you're gonna use to tell a story, to help tell a story. R&R &R actually means receive and release. Prisoners are admitted in and parolees are let out. The image that came to my mind was of a person leaving prison and seeing out the windows as, as a person's walking down the hallway, the flare that that would cause. And the flare represents many things in this case, but uh, maybe it's hope. Maybe it's, you know, the sun outside. It's something to reach for. So the light sources became a very, very important point of the story. And the lenses allowed me to utilize the characteristics of them for storytelling. My name is Rodrigo Prieto, and I was the director and cinematographer of R&R. &R.
I think sometimes it's better Shalom. just to let them uh, say it in their own words. So it's uh, wonderful to be able to work with Rodrigo to get his viewpoint on why the Radiance for Lenses work for him. But we have a lot of stories from a lot of cinematographers. You can go to our website at zeiss.com forward slash cine, click on the blog link, and you'll be able to see stories from all kinds of cinematographers from all over the world using our lenses. I just want to leave you with this uh, chart because sometimes it's a little confusing as to what sensor works with what lens combination. It's always a three-step process. Find out your sensor size that you're going to use. Find out if your lens covers that sensor size and then test to make sure that it works correctly. And if you look at it, the Supreme Prime Radiance and CP3 lenses have full frame plus coverage. So you can use any sensor from Monstro down to two thirds inch video and the lenses will work with them just fine. Uh, but if you want to use a lens for Super 35, just be aware that you're going to have certain limitations of what sensor size you're going to use it for. So that's all I have. Thank you so much for your time. And we will be in the breakout session to answer any questions. Thank you, Snay Hall. Really appreciate it. And we're, we're, we're back to this. Um, before we go on, I'm going to get some housekeeping stuff. Uh, a couple things. Um, Michael Kerner posted in the chat that the Northwest Pacific, Pacific Northwest Lens Summit is coming back next year. We all look forward to that. It's, it's um, one of the events that I dearly love doing. Um, and it's important for all of us to support each other. And in addition to that, also something that Michael supported, Filmscape is going to have a couple of rental days in late in um, June when we have our Filmscape Chicago event. We're going to actually dedicate two specific days just for the rental houses. Um, we're going to have the manufacturers come in and talk about all the kind of things that is going to make your life easier in the rental community and give you private time with the manufacturers. Um, it, it, the lighting companies in particular are very interested in this, and we think it's a good thing to go. So we're going to fall into the breakouts now and just so everybody remembers the breakouts are down below at the bottom and the breakout room you can go to if you click on it it should be able to take you out please come back we're going to be on the breakouts for about 30 minutes the breakout rooms are not recorded but when you come back we'll just have a group session here with everybody that's left and see what we want to talk about Let's uh, the poll is up right now. We, we did it one more time. Please hit the poll. Um, we only had a 38% a uh, use on the poll last time. I would really like to get as many people as possible to fill this out. Even if you've done it before, please fill out the poll for us. We would really like that. So let's head to the breakout rooms. And Seth is telling me he's boarding the plane now and not going to be on the thing. But thank you for coming, Seth. It's really appreciated. So. If you need help getting to a breakout room, just ask. Come online and ask. We're happy to share it out and send you there. Um, Exciting to hear we're coming back to Portland. Hey, yeah. 22 is going to be a great year. It's hey, about time. We're, we're so excited. It's going to be oh. great. <laughs> yeah, we're all looking forward to that one. Yeah, yeah. that's going to be one of my favorite events to do. So. Yeah, me too. It's a really stressful buildup, but then, man, when you guys are all here and it's all happening, it's so <laughs> worth it. Well, How are you doing, Carrie? Cool hey. about doing the film state too is that we've taken what you guys started with and you know added some other stuff to it and made it you know friendlier to the rental houses for all of all of it. And and that's an important part of all of this is that you know we're trying to help build the community and help educate everybody. And, yeah. And, you know, we started adding in the lighting companies and that, some of the grip companies, because, you know, not everything's about camera lenses, despite what we think. <laughs> All the good stuff is about cameras and lenses, right? Yeah. Oh. <laughs> but, you know, hey. I'm, I'm, back there, Gary. You got some hum. Yeah. Got, yeah, bad. His... I've got something going on. Yeah. There. Well, yeah. personally, I'm into the craft services. <laughs> <laughs> If we're being honest, so there, there's some good beer in Portland too. So yeah, that's for sure. Good beer, good food, good coffee. We got things. Right, you, got, coffee you, got stuff. you got You got those important stuff. What are those donuts that you have, Carrie? Oh, I don't get me started. They're, yeah, those are <laughs> worth the price of admission right there. There's so many. There's uh, Blue Star now is the sort of the new trendy one, and then. Uh, voodoo, of course, is the voodoo. Those are the, the, the quirky. Oh, all done. You got to see voodoo once in your life, and then yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's it. That's it. We That's... have a we have a voodoo here. Do they really? Oh yeah, my god, we do. I'm yeah. not surprised. It. <laughs> I was I was around when it was weird. Yeah, yeah exactly. Voodoo donuts used to be really weird. It, like it's still, I'm not sure that. that one will ever not be weird. <laughs> yeah. <laughs>
Anyway. All right, you guys, it was very nice to see you all. Look forward Good to seeing you at the yeah. Fun Summit. Bye, Harry. Yeah. Yeah. I'll yeah. see you later. Bye-bye. Yeah. Bye-bye. Okay. Wonderful opportunity. Hey. Hey, Jean-Marc. Very good. Everybody. Hey. So the 18th is the next one? Hang on. I lost everything here. Future technology. <laughs> You're fired. <laughs> We're gonna send you to your corner. Yeah, it's like everything else. We all everything falls right when you want it to. So it's like, okay, something goes wrong. And when I had to pull my because my battery died. Hey, so. Elfie Bird. <laughs> no. Hey, Elfie Bird. Is that working now? Don't you growl at me? Sounds <laughs> a lot better. Uh, yeah, it's like everything else. You know, if you start doing something, it, it blows up in your face. So. Of course. Mm -hmm. Um, Randy, if you want to just give me a call tomorrow, we can finish that conversation about the, it sounds good. the lenses. All right. You got it. Perfect. All right. Hey, Jean Marc. Hey, how are you, Gary? Good, my friend. Good, my friend. Congrats Thank on the new you. gig. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> uh, gosh. Well, everybody, you know, we've kind of had a good time here. There's just a few of us left. I don't think anybody's in the rooms. Um, you know, this is this is what it's all about, is trying to be able to help everybody and talk and share the information. And these have been really enjoyable for me to be a part of this week. And I thank Harry and the team at ESTA for allowing that. So, you know, it's for those of you that know me, you know I've been forward on education for a long time. And it's nice to be able to bring it in full force into the rental community and help us all grow our marketplace and our you know, the companions that we have in the rental industry. So. Yep. Well, right, it's been awesome it seeing everyone. I just um, have to go help somebody with a camera now. I realize. Yeah, it's it's that kind of thing, and we're all here. Off. If anybody else wants to talk, I'll stay for a while. <laughs> My dog wants to talk. <laughs> yeah, she's she's very she's very insistent. Thanks so much. Thanks, Harry, and everybody, and we'll I'll regroup again. I guess on the 18th. Next Thursday. Yep, yeah. week from today. Thanks, Harry. Yeah. Thanks, everybody. Bye. I Thanks really appreciate so it. Bye-bye. Okay, so thank you very much, guys. Um, Gary, thank you for all the work and the Esther team. Um, we really appreciate it to be well, with Thanks you for joining that. us, Tim. It's We know how difficult it is for you and Europe to join us, and we really appreciate it. Well, so. You know, um, it's at least a night uh, for drinking beer, so that's there you go. Got, yeah. one, got one right next to you. Yeah, uh, <laughs> and, and, and we don't empty, blame you, Tim. So, um, well, I that means you need one. to go and get a refill. <laughs> yes, but I need to drive, so uh, driving oh. um, more than one beer, it's no, not my thing. Yeah, that's very no. true. Yeah. So. That's not good. So guys, thank you very much. And oh. um, if we can be of any help, um, especially for you guys being on there, um, you know, if you need some some mad boxes support or lens test projector or whatever, let me know. And uh, I'm going to reach out to you happy. about uh, about some of the stuff you're doing on extended data because it's really important. It's something I've been delving in for the last year, yeah. so or two years actually. I started in. 2019 on it um, yeah, and and uh i i really want to see what you've been doing with that the servo for the promistas yeah so. and actually it's i can yes forward one on that side yes and then on the other side um for the lens projector there's a um a seminar on i think we put it on youtube or something i can send you the link for that which is all about um, lens data and how it's handled within the projector oh so that'd, that'd be interesting be, yeah just to see it so yeah so we're in the cook cool. i cook um uh, or cook eye uh, slash eye alliance and um, even the size extended stuff you, have you know I, I i i've been a part of that since less and dave stump dragged me into it when they were doing the initial testing on eye data so uh, dave i've been stump is still waiting through it to this day oh i know i i, I i'm <laughs> talking that what he's been doing with nuke and it's like yeah and it's and it's kind of interesting because basically i found out that the error side is not in the lenses it's in the manufacturer it's in the people who you know test them and they're so afraid Cameras of the are look. not frame accurate there it, is well but 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 the problem the other problem i ran into is and i hate to say this out loud but it's like shit people just didn't like care when it came to imperial measurement you know quarter of an inch like I, i'll take a two by four as an example it's close close it's, enough it, it's close enough yeah. and yeah. and when you start getting data that's accurate to hundreds of a millimeter 
that scares people who are, you know, well, lackadaisical about a quarter of an inch. <laughs> well, you realize how far off you are. <laughs> well, and and you don't want to admit to it. You know? it's a, it's a no, I meant to do that. <laughs> That's my new technique. Yeah. <laughs> But, but when you're dealing with, you know, okay, a quarter, it's a quarter of an inch among friends, you know, it's not a big deal. But when you start dealing with, you know, a tenth of a millimeter, that's a whole different level of accuracy that people are afraid of. And, and that was the biggest thing I saw in all of this. But on that, we'll leave it. And uh, I'm glad everybody was here. I look forward to seeing everybody next week, too. Bye. Cool. I won't be able to join, unfortunately. I'm traveling, but I wish you a good presentation and all the best. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you, Tim. Have a great evening, everyone. All right. All right. Have a great one. All right, Eric. Take care. Bye, Thank you. Take care.